With the extra point, this is Eric McKinney joined by Greg Katz. Greg, we are coming off uh, USC's 28-27 win against Arizona State. I, I think calling it a, a last-minute win is is certainly true of, of that phrase, coming back kind of a, almost down to the last few seconds there. Uh, does this win, in your mind, make it more or less likely that USC can go undefeated for the 2020 season? I think the answer to that is because theoretically the regular season schedule is so unimpressive with uh, the exception maybe of uh, at Utah. Uh, my feeling is, is they should go undefeated, but I believe as all the confetti and excitement has calmed down from the ASU game, uh, as I looked at it and watched the replay of it, I have a lot of questions that this 2020 team isn't the 2019 team. That being said, I also have to take into account they had no spring ball, okay, which caused hesitation on defense and players to look at the sidelines and they weren't sure. Okay, so you have to cut them a little slack there, I believe. Uh, you know, so was their tackling crisp? No. Were their pursuit angles uh, appropriate? No, we saw that on the long touchdowns that ASU had that you sit there and you say, well, wait a minute. There's three guys around him. How's he getting through this? Offensively, I actually have more questions about offense than I do about defense because for 56 minutes of that game, the Trojans only had 14 points, okay? This was a veteran offensive team. What do they have? from the 2019 team, not to sound uh, disrespectful, you got the same offensive coordinator and the same system. And to me, the bell alarm that, again, a defense is dropping eight men back, rushing three, they're only scoring 14, they needed, I don't care what anybody tells, tells me, that was a miracle ending. 98 out of 100 times they lose that game bobbled pass tipped in the end zone onside kick and then threading the needle on fourth and nine double covered down the middle are you kidding me but kudos to essie they did it hey it doesn't make a difference how you do it you do it but then i watched ucla in colorado and all of a sudden i said you know what maybe by the time sc plays colorado and ucla based on what I saw against Arizona State, maybe those aren't quite the gimmies they first appeared to be. You know, I, I think that it makes it much more likely that they go undefeated this year. I, I think that uh, maybe we, we talked about how difficult that Arizona State game would be, and I, and I think maybe we undersold it with no fans in the stands. And, and the fact that you didn't get any kind of warm-up game. Arizona is used to practicing in the morning. They're used to going in the morning, and they got more practices than USC did. I don't think USC is going to face another team that will be as ready defensively for what USC can do than Arizona State was with the, the pair of defensive coordinators that they have. And, and I think you saw a lot of the rust from USC. Now, now I'm going to go ahead and, and go with the big if of if they don't turn the ball over the way that they did. I, I wouldn't expect you know, Tyler Vaughns and Vavai Malapai and, and Steve and uh, Marquis Stepp to be putting the ball on the ground for the rest of the season. I, I think there was a lot of rust. And I do agree with Clay Helton when he says that every team that kind of has a big season, you, you get one of those games and it's up to you to come out on the plus side of it. Was that all USC coming out on the plus side? No, Arizona State helped out. That it, it was a lucky finish to go with some skill, that throw from Keaton Slovis, the catch from Drake London. But boy, now I think you get kind of some of these warm-up games. I, I don't think Arizona is, is going to be, you know, a team that's challenging for the Pac-12 title. Utah is going through, you know, so much in, in relation to, to coronavirus protocols and, and guys sitting out. And who knows if they're even going to get a game in before – USC goes up there, uh, UCLA, Colorado, you know, th these are games where you should be sort of hitting your stride. And then you look at that Pac-12 championship game. So if you do get Oregon uh, and, and if you're traveling there or if you get them uh, in the Coliseum, 
I think now you're sort of rolling, and, and I do think this USC team, you mentioned getting that defense uh, under control and, and used to it, getting that offense going a little bit. I, I do see kind of one big game left, and now you've got a lot of time to ramp up to that. Getting Winning this Arizona State game, I, I think maybe doubles your likelihood of, of going undefeated this season. That's, that's kind of what a challenge I thought starting with Arizona State and that quarterback and that defensive system and, and those defensive coaches and, and really the players they had too. That, that's a good group on that defensive side for Arizona State. I think USC clearing that hurdle sets the way. Now, are they a, a elite top three, top five team? That's a different discussion. We're, we're talking going undefeated through the Pac-12 South plus Washington State. And I think that win over Arizona State much, makes it much more likely uh, that, that we're going to see an undefeated team from USC at the end of the season. Well, I hear what you're saying. And uh, I will uh, suggest this. The Arizona State offense had no receivers. They were playing basically, there's a reason they kept running the ball. Because they couldn't pass the ball because their best receiver, Frank Darby, was on the sidelines for, uh, you know, maybe 90% of the game. Uh, they had another receiver was ineligible. My understanding is it was one of their better receivers. Didn't, you know, it's not playing this year. And it's also my understanding that uh, they had such young receivers that it became uh, the reality they couldn't catch the ball. You know, they, they didn't face it. Now, in terms of going undefeated, uh, that is the expectations. Now, having watched Oregon play, I will tell you, that by the time SC plays Oregon, this will really be a good Oregon team. Uh, you know, I was impressed with Slow, the quarterback, uh, and I think that they've got it all there. I think defensively they're tough, they're talented, and, uh, you know, I, I hear you if SC played in the Coliseum, but I always have to take a step back and say no matter where they play, there's no fans. So, uh, you know, I don't think uh, – home field advantage is going to be all that big a deal. But in terms of a national picture, since you touched on it, I don't see them as a playoff team at this point. In fact, I can't think of a worse game to show on national television, even though it was Arizona State, to, I mean, to win a game is big. Against Arizona State, it's big. But to be down like they were for the full nation to watch, when you talk about – the, one of the top four teams in the country. I don't think we would argue that, uh, ironically, SC would have played probably two of the top four teams in the country had they played Alabama and Notre Dame. I think they're one, two now in the polls. So, uh, you know, maybe in hindsight, that's a good thing they're not playing both of them. And I, and I do think at this point after that game and, and even looking at the schedule coming into the year, when we talk about, when we say championship, when we talk about championship, certainly the coaches and the players don't mean the same thing we do. I, I think we're talking about a Pac-12 championship and winning the Pac-12 South, getting, you know, maybe an Oregon team, maybe a Washington team, who, who knows who might come out of the North if it's not Oregon. But I, I think the kind of consensus certainly here is, that's the ceiling for, for this team. And the Pac-12 is, is most likely not going to be talked about unless there is just absolute chaos throughout the rest of college football uh, as one of those top four teams. But at the end of the year, if you're standing there as, as Pac-12 champions, I, I still think that you can say, hey, we did something and, and we put something together. Again, jumping that hurdle against Arizona State keeps you on that path to have a successful 2020 season.